I'm going to um, talk a little bit about the road ahead for um, OpenShift. And some of the stuff I'm going to go through quickly because I've talked about it, I've gotten the opportunity to talk about it at, in the panel, and a few people have talked about some of it already. So um, we really talk a lot about um, OKD today. We, I tried really to reiterate this. But it is, um, this is how we deliver OpenShift. We, we build it from that open source um, upstream project and we push it out into there. So if there's one takeaway that I can give you today is to really go and take a look at OKD, the documentations. Go look at learn.openshift.com if you're, if you're a newbie. It's a great source of um, information. And so it's official, you've all been blessed, and I've said OKD many, many times, and over beer you'll all say OKD with me and we'll have a toast and I'll think, oh, they're all listening and agreeing with me. Um, but Mar OpenShift um, in the marketplace and where OpenShift is right now, I think we can say that the industry has really standardized on Kubernetes, you know, and um, we've seen it, um, the growing groups of people, if you go to cncf.io and look at the, the membership there and the people who are, are part and parcel of the community, I think, um, I don't think there's anyone who's gonna disagree with me around that. Um, where we are, um, and you know, depending on which adoption life cycle, whether you're looking at the Gartner one, um, and we might be at the, the in the hype cycle, we might be not quite in the trough of disillusionment yet. That we're still in that excited period early, but we're still um, we're really seeing that it's now being uptake at, by the pragmatists, um, uh, hopefully the conservative folks, um, and I, we're even seeing in the banking and finance industry some of those folks are really taking Kubernetes on um, and OpenShift as well. So um, what we've really tried to, to express today um, and is that OpenShift now is the Kubernetes platform for your big ideas. It really has matured from uh, platform as a service and containers as a service and it's really taken that multi-cloud thing. But it's really um, I, we used to joke about HTML in the early days. I did mention that I worked on some of that, and I'm, I'm older than dirt um, and XML. But we always, when, when we had HTML around, we always used to say, we'll be really happy when nobody cares about what HTML is. You know? And slowly that happened. And slowly Kubernetes will become just part and parcel of your infrastructure, and it won't be anything. And so we're seeing that happen um, and coming. And I, you know, I look forward to the day where I'm not explaining Kubernetes anymore. But all of you, and you've heard some of the stories here, have different starting points. Some of, pe some of the folks today were running OpenShift on Open. OpenStack, um, some people are all about the microservices and cloud native stuff, and you come to it for, for different reasons and different starting points. And I think that's what makes your stories interesting is that no two of you are completely the same, but there is a common thread through them all around going cloud native and using containers and taking that new cultural shift and making that effective for you all. Um, and it's not just one specific industry or one set of groups of people, it's lots of people. So one thing you should never feel is that you're alone in this. Um, the big news this year really has been um, the OpenShift CoreOS integration. And, and I hope you all are aware that this happened because um, it happened in January. It was a big, wonderful acquisition and the CoreOS folks have been really um, amazing people to work with and collaborate with, and they've brought some um, really interesting in innovations to um, bring into the team. And one of the, you know, we talked a little bit about it. Um, I just wanted, I, nobody really mentioned this, but as we've, people have heard of Atomic and Container Linux, those two things are being brought together, and that's what um, will be CoreOS, um, and will be our minimal Linux distribution. Um, we didn't talk a lot about um, Red Hat Quay, but there are, as I always say, wonderful OpenShift Commons briefings on Quay, um, the container registry. That, that was a case of the big fish eating the next fish eating the smaller fish. Uh, the CoreOS acquired Quay, so in the acquisition of CoreOS, Red Hat got Quay. It's a wonderful platform um, for, all, for um, hosting. Um, container registries and scanning them, and it's very um, full-blown. And then this new thing that we call operators. And I really, I think that for me is 
is the game cha the next game changer for um, automating um, all of the infrastructure. And there's, you know, we've, we've had a couple of slides about this. You can come, um, I really highly encourage you if you are thinking about operators or wanting to use one, or if there's one that's missing, um, please let us know or come to the operator SIG. Um, you can find it on commons.openshift.org under the interest and just click through and you'll find it. There's lots of ISVs that are working with us to get their operators um, uh, certified on RHEL, but there's also lots of um, community ones. If you go to the operators repo, you can find this thing called Awesome Operators, and there's a list of about 50 to 60 community operators that are out there already, and we'll be moving um, some of that onto uh, the landing page for the operators SIG shortly. So there's, you know, there's lots of things coming together, and some of the stuff from Tectonic um, that's getting integrated in the next and the coming releases. Uh, Marek, who has had to leave us a little early today, unfortunately covered a lot of um, some of the new features that are in 3.10. There are some great briefings that I, again, on 3.10, and there'll be some upcoming with the next release. We'll have an OpenShift Commons briefing from the product managers on 3.11. Um, if you're all trying to take pictures of this um, and um, the fine print is too small, don't worry, I'll post the, the link to the, the, um, the slides and to their roadmap stuff. But there's a lot of synergies between what the CoreOS folks have, were doing and where we wanted to go. So this has become a, a really wonderful um, uh, relationship and it's been great. But when we have to ask, have we really crossed the chasm? And I think Today, um, from what everybody um, has shared with you, I think we know that containers in production are real. And they're real, and people are doing these things real on Red Hat today. So in some ways, we have um, definitively crossed the chasm. In other ways, there are a lot of people that we need to bring along with us in the community and to help um, learn from the lessons and the war stories and the things that you did. And so. Thank you to the folks today that have shared from Elisa and from that other company whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce, um, but from Arrow's team. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your stories. There are still a lot of people who are working on this. There's a lot of dynamics in this um, landscape. Um, there's people who still are, who are doing it themselves. There's still some traditional pauses out there, or pauses, depending on what your accent is. There's a number of startups. We're not going to say that OpenShift is the end-all answer to everybody's solution. But we are all going to work together on lots of different platforms to help solve th these problems for you and to, to roll them out and incorporate the lessons and the things we learn. We saw today um, Tony talking about the wonderful things that Mi Microsoft and Red Hat are doing together. There's lots more to come. If you come to KubeCon um, North America, there'll be even more because it's downtown Seattle, so I'm sure the Microsoft and Red Hat team will be there in force. Um, we're, you know, People like um, Red Hat and IBM have been doing a lot of stuff um, and a lot of great partnering is going on. So th there's tons of information out there. If you're looking for stuff like WebSphere and DB2 or MQ, um, reach out. We can connect you with the people at IBM as well and get them moving. So, you know, I started the whole day with this architecture slide, um, you know, with the four C's. And I think really what we've proven today um, with your participation and with the feedback that we've gotten, um, that it really is the four C's plus community that are really making the difference for OpenShift and for Kubernetes and for all of you. And so we're really pleased that you've joined us here today. I know there's beer out there, um, but I'm going to ask you one more time um, and remind you one more time to join um, OpenShift Commons um, so that you can share your stories and learn from other folks. Um, please do. And now, another word about the beer. The beer should be out there. It should be. No, well, you know, you know, I'd, I'd like to force you to do that, but I'm not in sales. All right, I'm in community, and I'm, it's open community, uh, but it's really uh, wonderful. The other thing that I was going to say, and um, about OpenShift Commons, that's different than other open source communities, is that we really ask you not to be anonymous.
And one of the things that's really helped us is that um, everyone who signs up signs up using their organizational name or their corporate um, sponsor's name or the, co the, the company that they work for's name in their email and in their Slack profiles. So everybody knows who you're from. So if you have an agenda or you, you, know, you have something, so it's, and it, it's kind of interesting because GitHub is really anonymous. Almost everybody, including myself, signed up for GitHub with their Gmail account, or you know, some of you with Hotmail, or if you still have that, or something like that. But um, the Commons is really about you know, self-identifying in a very positive way. We know um, when we're talking to someone who's a vendor, we know when we're talking to someone who has an agenda or a point of view, but we, as long as you're open about it, and honest about where you're coming from, it um, makes the conversation a whole lot richer. And it's also easier to go and find somebody who knows about a domain if you know where they're working or you've heard a story from them. So now you know how to track down the people from Elisa um, easily. So you can go into Slack and find them. If you'd like to join the Slack, let me know, and I will sign you up for that today too. I want to just one more time thank all of our sponsors. Um, without Arrow and Microsoft and New Relic, this would not have happened today. Um, and it really makes a huge difference um, to have participation from um, these Commons members. Um, if you are ever um, on the road somewhere and you want to get connected with someone, let us know. We'll definitely make sure that happens um, because it is really all about the peer-to-peer -peer network even more than it is about code contribution. It's about connecting you to your peers, and that's what OpenShift Commons is all about. So I invite you to come and have a beer with your peers and with the Red Hatters who are here and all of you who did not ask a question during the Q&A because you, know, you have that thing going on in Finland. Please ask those questions at the booth and thank our sponsors for us. So thank you very much. <laughs>